The bridge over the Strait of Messina will be the largest suspension bridge in the world, an infrastructure as hotly debated as it is incredible from an engineering standpoint. We have reconstructed the entire bridge over the Strait of Messina in 3D using the original designs. And we did this to help you understand essentially two things. First, what kind of bridge will it be? So, what are its main structural elements? And second, once the final project, which is still in progress, gets approved, what will be the chronological phases of construction? So, what I'd like to do today is start to understand what the bridge will be like from a technical and scientific perspective. We'll try to take as neutral and analytical an approach as possible. Let's say the idea is, let's see what this is really about. Setting aside the political and economic aspects for a moment, Let's start by understanding what a suspension bridge is. And we'll do that by analyzing the parts that will make up the bridge over the Strait of Messina. There are four essential parts. The towers with their foundations. In architecture and engineering, the correct term is foundations, the suspension system, the deck, and the anchorage blocks. This is the same structural form used in the Brila Bridge in Romania which can be considered a sort of smaller-scale twin of the Strait of Messina Bridge. Let's look at the functions of each of these parts. The towers. The towers are responsible for supporting the entire weight. They are made up of two legs that are, believe it or not, 399 meters tall, about the same height as the Empire State Building, just to give you an idea, connected by three large hourglass-shaped beams, which are technically called crossbeams. The legs of the towers rest on concrete foundations shaped like truncated cones, and these are 33 meters high. Let's move on to the suspension system, which includes the cables that connect the towers to the banks and the hangars that support the roadway. It consists of four cables in total, arranged in two pairs, one for each side of the bridge. Each individual cable has a diameter of 1.26 meters and is made up of 349 strands, each of which is in turn composed of 127 wires with a diameter of 5.40 millimeters. As a result, each cable is made up of as many as 44,323 steel wires in total. The deck, meaning the suspended portion, will be connected to the cables through hangers placed every 30 meters. So now let's move on to the deck, that is, the roadway. We mentioned at the beginning that it will be the longest suspension bridge in the world. But what does suspension actually mean? Well, in simple terms, it means that there's nothing under the road. In other words, there are no piers or columns supporting the deck, because the entire structure that holds up the deck is above. Got it? Ahead. <laughs> On the deck, there will be two highway carriageways, each 14.2 meters wide with two lanes plus an emergency lane, and in the center there will be two tracks for railway traffic. Between the two towers, which are obviously one in Calabria and one in Sicily, I'm pointing this out because the foundations are actually on land, not in the sea. There is a span called the main span, and in this bridge, it measures a full 3,300 meters. Currently, the record for the longest free span is 2,023 meters and belongs to the Chanicola Bridge which crosses the Dardanelles Strait in Turkey and was open to traffic in 2022. As you can see in this chart showing the evolution of suspension bridges from 1800 to today, the bridge over the strait will be an absolute record from an engineering standpoint. And on that note, I'd like to make a brief aside. There are certainly several technical aspects that could be discussed in detail, such as the innovative aerodynamic deck system, which is much more stable in the wind compared to those used in bridges built in the past. In fact, according to studies conducted by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport, this bridge could withstand winds of up to 270 km per hour. Another aspect that definitely deserves a dedicated deep dive is the one related to earthquakes, because according to the designers, the engineering solutions of this bridge are technically capable of absorbing the stresses from a magnitude 7.1 earthquake. Why 7.1? Well, if you agree, let's make a dedicated video about the wind issue and the earthquake issue. So let me know in the comments if you like the idea and maybe we'll make some dedicated videos. Closing this parenthesis, 
there's still one more element to talk about, the fourth fundamental one, the anchor blocks where the suspension cables will be fixed. These blocks serve to counteract the pull of the main cables. Basically, without these, the bridge couldn't stand. Now that we have the main elements of the bridge in mind, let's try to understand how these elements will be installed. According to the plan, the towers of the Messina Bridge would be positioned on land between Genziri, in the province of Messina, and Punta Pezzo, in the province of Reggio Calabria, right at the narrowest point separating Sicily from the mainland. And this is where the first phase begins, building the cable anchor blocks and the concrete foundations where the towers will rest. After the foundations, of course, the towers need to be erected. The legs of the towers are made up of 44 prefabricated segments, each 20 meters tall and weighing 1200 tons. Once the towers are completed, it will be time to install the suspension system. First, the four main cables we mentioned earlier are put in place. The 349 strands that make up each individual cable are pulled across one by one from side to side, then anchored to the blocks to form the complete cable. To prevent the metal from oxidizing, in addition to a special dehumidification system, the cables are wrapped with an extra metal wire and a special insulating sheath. Pairs of collars will then be mounted on the main cables to attach the hangers to the deck. Finally, the deck itself will be installed as the last step. The prefabricated deck sections, each measuring 60 by 60 by 4 meters and weighing 1,000 tons, will be transported in pairs on a barge beneath the bridge. Another specially built crane will lift the deck section up to the designated height, and the deck will be anchored to the hangers. This process will start from the center of the main span and proceed toward the banks. At that point, the bridge will be completed. That said, another aspect that is always talked about too little is that the final project, the project for the bridge over the strait, not only includes the bridge itself, but also a series of other works in the surrounding areas, including three new highway interchanges in Messina, a railway bypass with three train stations, also in Messina. In addition to these, there are also projects aimed at enhancing the area, such as the new waterfront with a multipurpose center in Calabria, hydraulic improvements to the riverbeds in Calabria, as well as 11 kilometers of coastline that will be restored with beach nourishment to protect the beaches and the environmental redevelopment of lakes and former abandoned quarries. That said, what we've just told you is obviously a summary of the work phases. Of course, everything is much more complex than this, but we think this is a good starting point to get a clear idea. I'd like to thank WeBuild, our partner for this video, and of course thank all of you for watching until the end. See you next time, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science.